Good day everybody, my name is Viprov and we'll be talking about the 13th chapter using Ajax with JSF. Now Ajax is a group of web technologies that enabled the creation of dynamic and highly responsive web applications. It allows web applications to retrieve content from the server without having to reload the entire page. So going over an overview of Ajax, Ajax often refers to JavaScript and XML, but Ajax is not limited to um, one of them. JavaScript is a dynamic scripting language running on a client side, mostly used to enhance the user's experience by allowing websites to interact with them asynchronously. When a JavaScript function sends a request to the server, the server often sends back an XML document that is used to update the page's document object model, or whatever you see on the client side. This interaction is what we refer to as Ajax. Um, just a little note, understand that the server can also send JSON documents as well, but we'll be focusing on XML for now. Now, there's a few um, advantages of using Ajax. First, you have data validation in real time, eliminating the need to submit um, forms for verification. There's enhanced functionality for web pages, such as usernames and password prompts, and partial update of the web content. This avoids complete page reloads, which is the big part of why, why Ajax is so incredible right now. Then there's the functionality of Ajax. Now Ajax can be added to JSF applications by um, using, uh, using JavaScript code to the app or using built-in Ajax resource libraries. In Java EE 7, Ajax is built in. And then there's Ajax with using facelets. The built-in Ajax resource can be used in JSF applications. Um, for example, with uh, F Ajax plus standard component in a facelets application, which adds Ajax functionality to any UI component without additional coding and configuration. And then there's the JSF Ajax request, which directly um, allows custom, uh, customized control of the component behavior. So an example of this would be our F Ajax tag over here. This Ajax behavior is added to this input text component. As you can see, Ajax behavior can be easily added to any regular UI component. Now let's take a look at sending an Ajax request. To activate Ajax functionality, the web application must create an Ajax request and send it to the server. One, ex uh, one way is using an event attribute where in this example, it beautifully explains how um, you can use an Ajax uh, tag to create an event called click. Here, the event that triggers the Ajax action is a mouse click on this button. There's then the execute attribute, which uh, where this code tells us that the input text component over here named user number is to run when the submit button is clicked. Uh, then there's listener attributes, which refers to a method that is executed due to an activated Ajax action on the client side. In this case, that means that whenever there is a method that is executed, it will now execute this method right here. It's kind of like a domino effect, which allows Ajax to be extremely dynamic, not only like working with input from the user, but also working with stuff that works on in the background as well. Now here, uh, let's take a look at monitoring events on the client. You can see the ongoing events with the on event attribute. Over here, you can see our on event attribute is monitor my Ajax event, which is a JavaScript function that monitors the Ajax request sent by the event. You also have to handle errors with Ajax since just like JavaScript, you have to handle errors. So there's um, something called the on error attribute which uh, which is uh, handled by this handle my Ajax error JavaScript function. Then there's receiving an Ajax attribute. The handling of the response is defined by the render attribute of the F Ajax tag over here. The render attribute identifies an output text component to display when the button component is clicked, the default event for a button. You can also put stuff like when the mouse hovers over the button or when it long presses, but like um, the default is usually just a click. Then there's the Ajax request lifecycle. When an Ajax request is received, the state associated with that request is captured by the partial view context. This object allows for the processing and rendering of the components. Next, 
the components with the execute attribute are processed and run through their own JSF lifecycles. Finally, the segments of the component tree that have the render attribute are rendered during the render response phase. The components and their children are then rendered and packaged up and then sent back to the client as a response. Now you can also group components as well. You, uh, you can do this under the Ajax tag. What you can do is uh, you can put all this stuff, like for example, a form tag under this Ajax tag, where um, it will trigger if either component is clicked, either the submit or the value over here. Uh, we can also add more specific events, like for example, this example right here, where um, now the button component will fire an Ajax action in the case of a mouse over event, as well as a mouse click event. Now let's take a look at um, an example that shows the advantages of using Ajax. Okay, now that we're in our NetBeans, let's open up our project. So let's go ahead and go all the way back to our um, web. And let's go into our JSF. And inside here, we will see our Ajax guest number. Open that up. You remember the guest number example that we saw from chapter eight, the introduction to facelets. Um, in this example, there's no need for that um, response page, which you will see over here. So the first thing that I want to take a look at is our Ajax greeting.xhtml. How you do that is you navigate to your web pages and you double click our Ajax greeting.xhtml. And inside here, it's almost exactly the same, but with one change, our action attribute is gone. It's because we don't need an entire page to reload a response. In this case, we can have Ajax to do our um, executing and our rendering instead. So uh, one more thing that we want to see is inside our manage bean, these are all setters and getters. Um, there's one interesting thing over here. If your user number is like if they didn't input anything, uh, it actually reloads the page by returning null. This um, makes the user experience much better because if you input nothing by mistake, a turn isn't taken off. Since uh, in this example, you have a few turns and if you can't guess it in the number of turns, then you kind of lose the game. So we don't want to make it unfair. Like you accidentally press the enter button and it's like, come on, I lost my turn. So this null makes sure that that doesn't happen. And uh, one final thing is if you see over here, this is kind of an advanced topic and we'll be talking about CDI later on in the later tutorials. But this at inject, all it's doing is it's injecting this Duke's number bean instance, this variable right into here so it can be used. This manage bean where it has all the setters and getters, it's using all of this and it's basically injecting it into this bean right here. Okay, so now that you understand what's going on, let's go ahead and start our Glassfish server. So now that you have your Glassfish server up and running, let's go ahead and uh, build our um, project. Go ahead and click build. So once you have it built, let's go ahead and run this. So let's go pop into a, uh, our Chrome browser and let's put in this link HTTP localhost 8080 slash Ajax guest number. Go ahead and put that in. And what you'll be greeted with is your friend Duke. So he's thinking of a number between zero and 10 and you can go ahead and click, uh, you, or you can go ahead and try out uh, some number. Let's start with one. And if you realize that what's the difference from the previous example was that uh, this is not a completely different page. This is the same exact page. The only thing that's changed is this part right over here. This saves your servers a lot of time and a lot of um, like, like thread space. It's because that um, instead of reloading the entire thing just for this little guy, why not just re um, reload the entire, uh, this little guy um, so you can see if it's correct or not. So uh, just to show that um, it doesn't work if you click submit and there's nothing there. You see, nothing happened. And uh, let's try four. And I got it. Damn, all right, that was pretty good. And that's it. And that wraps it up for this tutorial, everybody. So I think you can understand why Ajax is so great when using uh, it in your web services. But now that you get all that, 
I'll see you in the next video.